All right, so what we're going to look at now is we're going to be looking at some different tests for convergence. Um, specifically, we're going to be looking at three different uh, tests for convergence or three different topics inside of this, uh, inside of this um, discussion. One is the divergence test, the second is the integral test, and the third we're going to look at is the p-series. So let's take a look at a little theorem that we have here, and this is going to go into uh, us making a determination about the convergence test. So the theorem says, if the series, the sum, okay, n equals 1 up to infinity of a sub n is equal to 0, is convergent, excuse me, is convergent, then the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is going to equal 0. And so let's take a look at a proof of this. So what we're going to say is, is that we're going to suppose a, the sum, n equals 1 up to infinity of a sub n is convergent. Then our partial sums, okay, a sub n is going to end up equaling s sub n minus s sub n minus 1, right? Our partial sums made up of um, a sub n minus a sub n minus 1, or s sub n minus 1, the previous, okay? Now, since the sum n equals 1 up to infinity of a sub n is convergent, all right, then these partial sums, s sub n and s sub n minus 1, are also convergent. They're subsequences. They're called convergent subsequences. We're going to keep that uh, unproven, but it kind of makes sense because they're part of a converted sequence, right? If they were infinite, then this sum would also be infinite as well, okay? Now, since n minus 1, okay, approaches infinity, Right, as n approaches infinity, we'll have, we have the limit as n approaches infinity of s sub n minus 1 is going to end up being s. Some value s, right, because convergent. Okay, thus we'll have that the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is going to equal the limit as n approaches infinity, right, okay, of s sub n minus s sub n plus 1, which is going to equal basically, right, we'll split out the limits, so limit as n approaches infinity of s sub n minus the limit as n approaches infinity of s sub n minus 1, or s sub n, yeah, s sub n minus 1, excuse me. Which is just equal to s minus s, which equals 0. Okay? And that actually proves it for us. Basically, those last two terms, as far as you as you can go out as long as you want, okay, but those last two terms are going to be so close to each other that they pr practically are zero. And as you go out to infinity, they actually are going to be the same, right? They're going to be so close to get together that the, the difference between the two of them ends up being zero, right? And so consequently, we end up with that uh, the sum of the sequence, or excuse me, yeah, the sum of the sequence ends up being equal to zero. Not the... The sum of the sequence ends up being convergent, right, means that that limit ends up equaling zero. Now, in math and in logic, we have this other thing called the contrapositive, right? The contrapositive is what happens when we take the contrapositive is we're actually just going to switch, right? We're going to switch these two statements to make this the ifs part. If the limit as n approaches a, a sub n, right, is now not equal to zero so we'll switch it and negate is what we say and then we get the infinite series is not convergent or it's divergent so our is if the limit as a sub n approaches infinity 
okay, or excuse me, as n approaches infinity of a sub n does not equal zero, then the sum n equals one up to infinity of a sub n is divergent. And this is the divergence test. This, by the way, is in fact a test only for divergence, all right? So we can rewrite it. There's our divergence test, okay? This is a test only for divergence. So this ends up being a test only for, di for divergence. So let's take a look at an example, all right? Let's suppose that we have the sum n equals one up to infinity of n squared over five n squared plus four, okay? Show this diverges. Show this sequence or series diverges. And we'll use the divergence test. So we're gonna take the limit as n approaches infinity okay, of n squared over five n squared plus four. Well, we kind of know that this is gonna end up being equal to one fifth, which doesn't equal zero. And so the series diverges. And that's that simple. Can this show that this, this, the series converges? No. It can't. All it can do is eliminate series as being possibly convergent. So it just shows that a series is divergent. That's the only thing that this can in fact show. All right, so now the next step inside of our work is we're gonna work with something called the integral test. And the integral test is going to be, it's a bit more involved than uh, the earlier test that we have. It's going to look at, uh, we've got, suppose our set, n equals one up to infinity of a sub n is a series with positive terms of a sub n, right? So now notice that we've got our a sub n's are actually all positive terms. It's really important, okay? And then we have a function f and a positive integer n, okay? And that's big N, so notice big N's different from little n. And then we need to know some things about f. One, f has to be continuous, and two, f has to be de decreasing, and then three, f of n is equal to a sub n for all integers n greater than or equal to big N, okay? Um, and so basically what, what ends up happening or what we, we wanna know is that at some point in time, our um, values for our sequence, okay? The values for our sequence are all gonna equal, are gonna all end up equaling A sub N, all right? And it'll, F of N is equal to A sub N, so these F of N, they'll actually equal it to each other. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that that will happen right at the offset, right, right, like right at the beginning, okay? But at some point in time, it does have to occur. And if all three of those things, in fact, are true, then we'll get that the sum of the a sub n's and the integral from n to infinity of f of x dx will either both converge or they will both diverge. So what this is gonna do, it's not gonna give us a value, but it will tell us whether or not our series diverges or if it converges, all right? So that's gonna be actually end up being really important. So let's actually take a look at this and let's work it through. We're gonna do two examples of this to kind of see how all of this works, okay? It's a multi-step process and it can be at sometimes pretty involved, okay? So let's ask the question, does this series that we have here, does it converge or diverge? Is the sum n equals one up to infinity of one over n squared plus one? So if n is greater than or equal to one, okay, then this series, a sub n is gonna equal, right, um, f of n, which is gonna equal one over n squared plus one, all right? And that's just, you know, that's, it could be obvious that all we're gonna do for this particular one is we're gonna substitute in f of n into uh, as the, the value for a sub n, okay? And that's all, all right? So we start there. So now that's the first thing. The second thing is, is that if, 
right? Okay. Um, if n is greater than or equal to, well, actually, if n is any value, but if n is greater than or equal to 1, right, okay, then 1 over n squared plus 1 is continuous as it is a rational function. So if you remember, that's a value, rational function defined for all real numbers. So that's the continuity piece. We have to have that. And basically, um, what you want to do is you want to just make sure that we don't have any weird, weird things happening, right? Like holes or, or um, yeah, or like asymptotes. So it ends up being it's um, continuous for all those values. Now we need to figure out is f decreasing. All right for, in this case, n greater than or equal to 1. So what we'll do is we'll take f prime of n, and that's going to equal 1. Okay, that's going to end up equaling, right, um, negative 2n over n squared plus 1 squared, okay, which is negative for n greater than or equal to 1. Right? Because what we're going to get is this is negative on top and the bottom is always going to be positive. So it's going to end up being negative for n greater than or equal to, to 1. So f is decreasing for n greater than or equal to 1. Okay? So that's the second part. F is decreasing. And so we have the three pieces here for our formula or for our uh, theorem. One, we've defined a sub n is equal to f of n because it is just one over n squared plus one, right? So that's the first piece or that's now the third on this set. We have f is continuous, we showed that. And then f is decreasing, okay? Also notice that all of these are positive terms. So one over n squared plus one. So now what? Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this, then we're going to take the integral from n to infinity of f of x dx, okay? And we're going to see if that actually converges. See whether or not we actually get a value for it. So we're going to take the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared plus 1 dn. Okay, or you could use dx, I suppose. All right. Actually, that's that's what they use. They use x squared, so we'll use x squared plus 1 dx. Okay. And then this is just going to end up being, that's our, um, that's going to end up being the limit as t approaches infinity of the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. And that'll end, end up being the limit as t goes to infinity of, and this is tan inverse, evaluated from one to t. So excuse me, that's one to t, sorry, one to t. Okay. This will then be the, the limit as t goes to infinity of tan inverse of t minus tan inverse of one. And so this is gonna end up then equaling, well, this right here, that's pi over two. Right, you gotta make sure that you got your, your uh, tan inverses. So that's gonna be pi over two minus, and this one here is then pi over four. So we end up with that that's equal to pi over four. So the integral from one to infinity of f of x dx converges. What does that mean? By the integral test, and this is in fact how we write it, by the integral test, The sum, n equals 1 up to infinity of 1 over n squared plus 1, converges as well. So this is a multi-step process. We've got to ensure that we have the, the pieces of this particular test all put together, right? We have to, one, find our function, right? Our f of n. Two, 
we have to make sure that f of n is, is continuous on all the values for n that we are looking for, n and above. We have to make sure that f is decreasing um, for all the values above n. Okay, And then, once that's the case, then all we have to do is go in, calculate that interval, if that, in that integral, if that integral con converges, then our series converges as well. By the way, note, the sum n equals 1 up to infinity of 1 over n squared plus 1 may not be 1 fifth, or excuse me, pi over 4. So it may not actually be pi over 4. It could actually end up being something different. All right. It, all we're doing here is determining whether or not our series converges or not. We are not actually divert, uh, we are actually not figuring out what it converges or diverges to. So, let's take a look at another example. Does the series, the sum, n equals 1 up to infinity of e to the negative 7n converge or diverge? So, what we're going to do is we're going to make some determinations. One, we're going to find f of n. So, we're going to let f of n equal e to the negative 7n. That's our a sub n, so that'll be f of n. Two, okay, uh, e to the 7n is exponential, and so it's continuous. It is continuous for all r. So that's our second point. We need to make sure that we show that it's continuous for all r. So we need to know that. And then three, okay, f prime of x is going to equal the derivative e to the negative 7x, okay, which equals negative 7e to the negative 7x. Okay, which is less than zero, right? As e to the negative seven x is greater than zero, right? So negative seven e to the negative seven x is gonna be less than zero, it's gonna be negative, right? For all x. So f of n is decreasing. For all r, okay, actually it is for all r. For all the real numbers, and for, and we'll just choose n, or n greater than or equal to 1. By the way, putting this 1 here, like in the previous example, it means that our n, our big N, is just equal to 1. In this case, 1 and above, we're going to have uh, all these things be true. So, we'll use the integral test. We're going to take the integral from 1 to infinity of e to the negative 7x dx, okay? And that's gonna end up equaling the limit as t approaches infinity of the integral from one to t of e to the negative 7x dx, which is gonna equal the limit as t goes to infinity of e to the negative 7x evaluated from one to t, which is the limit as t approaches infinity of e to the negative 7t minus e to the negative 7 times 1. Okay. Oh, pardon me, and this should be negative 1 7th. Just a little issue there. A little issue, big issue. So this is going to end up being negative 1 7th times all of this. Okay. And so this is actually negative 1 7th and this limit right here is going to go to 1, or excuse me, is going to go to, yeah, it's going to go to 1. So it'll be 1 minus, or actually it's not 1, it's going to go to 0. 0, because it's going to negative infinity, so e to the negative infinity is 0. So it'll be 0 minus e to the negative 7th, which is just equal to 1 7th e to the negative 7th. Which means the integral from 1 to infinity of e to the negative 7x dx converges. So, by the integral test, the sum n equals 1 up to infinity of e to the negative 7n converges as well.
And so that is how we do the integral test. All right, we've got three requirements that we have to fulfill first. Then we show the convergence of the integral. And once we do that, then what we have is it tells us whether or not our um, sequence converges uh, as well. Excuse me, I mean my series converges as well. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at a, um, a series that's actually incredibly important for our work with series, and that's called a P-series. And that is the sum n equals one up to infinity for one over n to the p, right? So examples of P-series are one over n squared, one over n cubed, one over n to the three-fifths, all right? And um, what we're gonna get is, is that we're gonna get that this, the, the series, one over n to the p, is gonna converge if p is greater than one, and it'll diverge if p is less than or equal to one, right? So that's gonna end up becoming very important for us. So let's take a look and see <coughs> why this is the case. We're gonna use both the divergent, uh, the divergence test and also um, the integral test in order to prove this. So suppose, okay, um, we have that p is gonna be less than zero. Then, right, the limit as n approaches infinity of one over n to the p, okay, is actually gonna equal, right, like if you let p equal negative n, it's gonna end up equaling infinity, right? Because this is actually gonna be n to some, right, uh, is gonna end up equaling n to some positive number on top, and so consequently it's gonna end up going up to infinity, it's gonna expand without n. Now let's suppose, okay, that p ends up equaling one, okay? Or let's say p equals zero, right? Then what we have is the limit as n approaches infinity of one over um, n to the zero is just equal to the limit as n approaches infinity, okay, of one, which is equal to one, which does not equal zero, okay? So in both of these cases, we have divergence. So that's divergence that we've just shown there, okay, uh, by the divergence test. All right, okay. Now, next up, what we're gonna wanna say is, let's suppose P is greater than zero, all right? So now we're in the positives, all right? Then the limit as N approaches infinity of one over N to the P does equal zero. So the divergence test is inconclusive. That's something that's really important, is that we don't get an answer using the divergence test. So we're gonna to have to use a different test, right? So the divergence test is gonna end up being inconclusive. So what we'll do is we'll use the integral test, all right? All right, we're gonna first let P be greater than zero, okay? So one, we'll let f of n equal one over n to the p. Then two, one over n to the p is continuous for all n greater than or equal to one. So we're good there, we're good to go, okay? And then we'll find three, okay? n to the negative p prime is gonna equal negative p times n to the negative p minus one, okay? Which is decreasing as p is greater than zero. So this ends up being, it's all negative. So it's decreasing for all n greater than or equal to one. So we're good there too. So let's just check, let's check now. Let's put in the integral. So we're gonna take the integral from zero, or excuse me, not zero, but one to infinity, okay, of n to the negative p d n, or x to the negative p, excuse me, dx. And that's gonna end up equaling, um, the limit as t approaches infinity of the integral from one to t of x to the negative p dx, 
which is equal to the limit as t goes to infinity of one, or excuse me, negative p plus one times x to the negative p plus one evaluated from t uh, evaluated from one to t okay which ends up equaling the limit as t approaches infinity of negative p plus one okay times t to the negative p plus one minus and in this case just negative p plus one right because then it's going to just be times one is one and this ends up equaling well it depends. It depends upon p, okay? If p, right, is greater than zero, or excuse me, is greater than one, then then t, okay, to the negative p plus one, all right? will go to zero because right negative p plus one is going to be less than zero it's going to be negative right so t to a negative power is just going to descend to zero but if p equals one then right t to the negative p plus one is just equal to t and the limit as t approaches infinity of t is going to be infinity. So this, this um, series will, di uh, so the integral will diverge. And if p, okay, is greater than one, Okay, then, oh, excuse me, and if p is less than one, then negative p plus one, okay, is positive. So t to the negative p plus one, the, or the limit as t goes to infinity of negative t to the negative p plus one is just gonna equal infinity. So the integral will diverge. So if we look at this, we get one when p is less than zero, diverge. When p is greater than zero, diverge, right? And these we use the divergence test. P, um, or excuse me, that's p equals zero. p is less than one, we got diverges. And p equal to one, okay, we got diverges as well, okay? This is by the integral test. So finally, if P is greater than zero, we get by the integral test that the sum N equals one up to infinity of one over N to the P will converge. And that actually helps us out to kind of understand where this P series is coming from. This P series is incredibly helpful, incredibly powerful when it comes to like just doing math, right? Okay, just doing this kind of mathematics, just kind of like determining whether or not series uh, converge, okay? So let's take a look at an example. Okay, so here's a question. Does this series, the sum k equals one up to infinity of one over uh, the sixth root of k to the fifth converge or diverge, all right? And then we want to know what is the fourth partial sum, or S4, for this particular series. So the first thing I want to notice is, is that this is the sum, k equals 1, up to infinity of 1 over k to the 5 sixths, okay? Which is a p-series. 
with p equal to 5 over 6. Now, 5 sixths is less than 1, and so the series diverges. That it is. By, the, by our rules for p-series, it's the series that's going to diverge. So we can go in, we're going to go and uh, calculate these by hand, these four sums. So I'm going to take 1 over the sixth root of um, 1 to the fifth plus 1 over 2 to the 5 sixths, we said again, plus 1 over 3 to the 5 sixths plus 1 over 4 to the 5 sixths, okay, which equals, so this gives us 1 plus 1 1.7818 plus 2.498 plus 3.1748, which ends up equaling 8.4546. And that is our partial sum for four terms. That's really all there is to like utilizing p-series. Now we're gonna utilize them much more, so you really wanna make sure that you go in and you memorize this information for the p-series. I, in fact, am gonna recommend that you memorize all of our tests, all the different tests, because the fact of the matter is is that um, there, it gets really hard to do if you're like kind of working off your notes, um, especially if you're you know going to end up doing exams and the like. All right, so that completes this particular lecture. We'll go into estimating the errors using uh, integ the integral test um, inside of our next video.